So this is my 2014 BMW i3 with range extender and it's the subject of today's video. Now this car uh, is a little weird and has a bit of a mixed opinion but uh, I really like it and I've really only had one problem with it and it's flaps. Not the cool flaps like you might have in a fighter jet but these kinds of flaps. Gas flap and the subject of today's surgery is the uh, charging port flap. Um, they've both failed in, in some way or another. They're both still usable, but uh, not 100%. Now, yeah, you know, it's locked. There we go. If you're not familiar with uh, electric cars, this is where the angry pixies go. And there's two plugs. Uh, this top one here is the standard uh, 120 or 240 volt uh, input. Uh, let's say, call it about 7 8 kilowatts. <clears throat> this lower plug is the uh, high voltage DC um, quick charge port. Um, you can get tens of kilowatts uh, going through here. Now, if you look at the plug here, you'll see that. There's this like um, lock here, and that holds the plug in and prevents it from coming out unless you push this button. However, for added safety, there's a, an extra pin. You see it in white. It's kind of mangled. Uh, that comes out in theory when you plug in the uh, plug and it's actively charging. And let's see if I can demonstrate this. If it were to come out, it would prevent the um, the release from coming up, therefore preventing you from pulling the plug out. And by the fact that it hasn't come out, you can probably guess that that's the problem. Um, when charging the car by 240 volts, um, let's say level 2 charging, with a plug like this at home, it's not a problem. The car will ignore the fault. However, when you're trying to use the quick charge, it'll try to eject that pin but fail. And it'll detect that and it'll prevent the quick charge from, from uh, engaging. Now I'm no stranger to work on European cars but my usual strategy of uh, yelling in Italian is probably not going to work for this particular brand of European car. So we must follow the procedures. All, I don't know, 20 pages of them. And the most important thing is to do this because the safety uh, precautions for an electric car are slightly different from a uh, internal combustion car. So we need to disconnect the the battery because in this area uh, under here there's the um, uh, the range extender engine, there's the uh, main drive, and about 400 volts of uh, of electricity running around there, and we don't want to accidentally engage. And uh, well you know, fry me, because that would be, uh, well, y'all wouldn't be able to see this video, so that would be a travesty. And what you do that is you open the front, and you pull off this cover, it just pulls off by hand. And uh, this is the uh, the safety switch. So to disengage it, uh, you just pull this up. All right, sorry, I had to use two hands to push the little catch down there. But um, as you can see, it says on up there. You just pull this down, and it says off. And that's the uh, high voltage disengaged. Uh, if you really wanted to be fancy about it, you could put something in this hole here, like a lock or something like that, so that it can't accidentally fall down. So of course the uh battery juice doesn't actually go through that tiny little connector. Uh, it just controls um, if the um, the main battery contact or relay uh, has the potential to be energized. Because in, in the car there's a huge relay uh, that uh, engages or disengages when uh, power is required. So when you turn the car on you'll hear a big clunk as that thing engages and when you turn it off uh, you'll hear another clunk as it disengages. When it's sitting still here, <clears throat> there's a chance that 
if the uh, smaller lead acid battery in here for the accessories runs low, it could engage that main contactor to uh, top it up from the uh, you know the big traction batteries. So definitely don't want to do that and surprise you. So anyway, eight millimeter bolt. Do that on the other side. Whole bunch of screws down here. Don't forget to take out the uh, license plate holders or uh, license plate lights. The clip is on the right hand side. Should just be able to pull them right out. There we go. Watch your knuckles. And this is where it starts getting very German. You need to use, uh, you know, one of these uh, Torx drives. Hopefully I've got the right one. Okay, so now the bumper is pretty much ready to come off. The only thing really remaining, holding it on, is in there. Let's see if I can turn on some light. So you see where my index finger is? There's little latches. They need to squeeze and disengage so that it'll uh, pop off. Uh, I don't think I'll be able to get in there and show you, but uh, you know, you get the idea. They're just little latches, kind of like you'd have in your iPhone or whatever, but much bigger. Okay, so you just reach around inside here, pull this uh, mud guard out of the way, and as you can see, there's four of them. So you just reach up in there, squeeze it pull it out. They're not hard to get out, so if you're struggling, make sure you're pushing very slightly on here. It's not a very aggressive clip, so um, yeah. Time to do this on the other side, but as you can see, we're pretty loose already. Oh, there's a bit of water in there. Okay, and there's a couple of plugs um, that you got to get rid of too. In theory, you're supposed to use two people for this, but I'm using my foot. And you just pull up on these uh, backup sensors. You don't have to unplug them. You just unclip. Uh, there we go. Just pull them out. Just do that for the lights too. Etc. etc. I better put this down on the tripod before I make a fool out of myself. Pretty rough on your hands reaching down inside there. Um, oops. On this side, there's a big bundle of cables, and I think the air intake for the uh, for the range extender in the way. It's hard to reach up in there, but you can do it. Maybe wear gloves. But uh, cool. So you can see these big orange cables here. I believe. Those are the input from the uh, charge port. Not 100% sure, but I'm sure we'll find out. All right, so there's a bunch of screws up in here. Kind of hard to see. Okay, so those have been released, and up in here, there's a couple connectors to disconnect. So these are the things to disconnect. There's a couple connectors. Yeah, they were a pain, all right. Um, but if you feel around, on the left or the right, you'll kind of feel them. Um, they're two different designs. I'll show you a, a close-up of the connectors once I get everything else out, but 
uh, you know, you squeeze them and then you pull them out. I was able to do it by touch. All right, so these three screws here that you just saw me remove, pretty easy. And instructions release screws, yeah, fine. These front ones though, they're behind, they're in the door jamb. So I don't know how to access them. So here we are inside the car. <clears throat> and, okay, there's one. There's two, those I can access. But three and four, I guess. I guess, yeah, okay, I guess that's acceptable. Oh, this is loose. Uh, I guess I'll fix that too. Yeah, I guess that's not so bad. I was freaking out over nothing. That was a little tricky. More of the clips, but you can't access them from underneath, so you just have to rip it out. Um, Alright, so here's the connectors I was talking about. So you just have to kind of... Whoops, here's the connector. So you just have to push this. Release. This is a different design. The release for this one is uh, on the actual... Uh, on the plug, I guess. Let's see if we can see it. Yeah, you see a little tab? Maybe you didn't have to push it at all. Maybe you just rip it out. Anyway. Okay, here we are. By the way, when you um, pull the panel out, it's going to deform this thing quite a bit. Um, it's okay though, it seems to survive it just fine. But uh, anyway, there's these little catches here, and you just put your finger in it and pull the catch out, and it releases. Do that on both sides. Ugh. See? You pull these out, they release. to use a fancy tool to undo the screws holding this on. I don't really understand why. They just look like normal screws. Oh, they have a pin. These are security screws. Yep, these aren't Torx. These are pentalobes. For every problem, there exists a solution. Simple flat bladed tip. Start it with something beefy, and you can slowly back it out with these. Hopefully. Of course, I'm going to replace these with something a bit more user friendly as soon as they come out, so I don't care about destroying them. Screw you too, BMW. Screw you too. Okay, so this is the really amusing part. Um, the fix for this problem, according to the fastidious Germans, with an official uh, how-to, take a file to it. Yeah, really. Enlarge it by third of a millimeter. So literally, take a file, make that hole bigger. Nice.
Okay, so here is the uh, little actuator. You may be wondering why I brought it up here to the bench. Well, uh, I'm actually not convinced that this thing even works anymore. Um, it might be, just be jammed very well, but I don't even hear it trying to release. So, I don't know, I'm just going to work it a little bit with a file here um, where it's a bit more comfortable just to get rid of any burrs. Because uh, one time I did have to uh, uh, forcibly push this back in uh, because it was <laughs> it was ejected, it wouldn't go back in and I, I couldn't release from a public parking station uh, charging station rather and I was just kinda stuck there until I could unhook the cable so I did uh, a kind of panicky thing and I just kinda shoved it back in there but uh, really I should have uh, found the emergency release but anyway so I'm just gonna open this up and uh, just see what it's like inside, see if there's something visibly broken. Pentalobes. Unbelievable. Glued or what? Mm. There goes a the clip. Okay. Ugh, jeez. I can at least figure out how this thing works now. And I can test it. Alright, so I got brave and I uh, took this thing apart. Turns out that the timing is really easy anyway. Um, so this is wrong, but this is right. So if you look at it as it rolls all the teeth engage. If it's off by one not all the teeth engage. So easy enough. Um, so I was poking around looking for damage and this uh, gear here, this compound gear, is responsible for transmitting the power from the motor here uh, to the next stage in the mechanism on this um, on the bigger gear here but this extra little, I guess, pinion is uh, responsible for coupling the emergency release pull into the, the rest of the mechanism so you can pull the flap and uh, release the charging uh, pin. And this actually has a broken tooth. Well, upon closer inspection, the broken tooth is not actually broken. It is just kind of bent and deformed, so I might be able to just push it back uh, and have this be able to run smoothly. Uh, so yeah, I'll just try that. So I also want to test the motor in this thing. Now that I've figured out that there are no electronics in this little box, um, I can uh, kind of poke and prod things with electricity with uh, impunity. So I traced out the connections. The outer two pins, there's four pins, so pin one and pin four are directly connected to the motor. And I've got my uh, EV blog 121GW meter uh, hooked up in millivolts, uh, reading millivolts, and if I reach in here and spin the motor you can see that it reacts. So that tells me that I have the the correct pins um, for the motor. So I'm just going to unplug that. These are wires going to my power supply. I'm just going to professionally jam into the connection. I'm going to turn this down, set a current limit of, a, I don't know, 100 milliamps or so. Turn this on. Okay, you can probably hear it spinning. It doesn't sound super healthy, but it is spinning. Here, I'll show you. So that's working. This is the, the emergency release mechanism and it does have to be timed somewhat correct to work. Um, so that'll be a drag if it isn't, but this pinion or this compound gear goes in here and engages both. You might be able to get it to run open if I hold 
things down just right. Yep. Let's see if I can get a full revolution out of it. Oh yeah. Okay, so things aren't working quite right. Um, it's kind of jamming up. So I've got it powered off and I'm pushing on this Ugh, and I can't move it, which is good. If it powered up in the retract direction, there it is, it's powered up, not doing much, but if I help it, I can kind of move it. So there's, the gearing is not working quite right, unfortunately. And I thought it might be like the um, the bearings might not be held in place enough by this damaged housing now. Um, and that may be the case, but um, I was holding it together. I tried holding it together with a vise, um, and it doesn't seem to be changing anything whatsoever. So, it's time to do some more debugging, I think. Figure out what's the problem. I mean, you know, clearly I'm going to buy a new one of these. Um, because it's silly to keep using this unit here. But for the time being, you know, I've got a trip coming up in a few days. Uh, I'd hate for this to be the thing that holds me up. So I'm going to keep trying. I'm kind of resigned to, uh, to buying a new one of these, but I'm going to try one last thing. Um, this might affect the longevity, I don't know, um, but I'm going to add some lubricant here, uh, just some grease to all of the, uh, all of the gears. Um, in the hopes that it will reduce friction somewhat. Uh, I know that in the plastics, lubrication isn't necessarily as straightforward as it seems, um, but I'm going to do it because I'm going to get a new one of these anyway, and uh, if it makes it worse, well, I can just wash it off. Uh, I did notice that the uh, little arm here, the emergency release arm, uh, is actually driven with a hollow gear see that and there's splines on the arm and they just kind of plug in there so basically you can time it um, after the thing is assembled so that's that's nice Extend. Pretty decisive, I'd say. Okay, so I think that is a working ish unit. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, I'm going to silicone this up. I'm just going to use you know, just random silicone that I have. Okay, so now it's time to reassemble things. And uh, here's the original screws. Garbage. Uh, poked around in my random screws collection. I found these two black ones that seem to be pretty much the same, except in head size, if I can get both of them into the shot. Um, but they seem to fit, so I'm going to use those. I've got these second choices here. These aren't quite the same though, so in thread, so try those first. Perfect. De-appleified. Alright. Time to put this thing back together and then give it a test. This way, I think. Okay, so I've reassembled all of this, at least electrically. And uh, note that I've left this little shroud out. Um, you put that on after everything else has gone together because this lip needs to go on the outside. At least that's how it was when I came across it. But I'm actually going to leave this off until I know everything works and probably until I replace that um, the actuator because I might actually be able to service this 
um, without taking the entire side off of the car. Mm, maybe, maybe not. Anyway, I'm going to leave the option open, so I'm probably going to just put this in the back of the car and just wait. But anyway, I've reattached the high voltage um, disconnect at the front of the car, and I'm going to try plugging in power and see what happens, see if that pin comes out. Okay, well, it's accepting charge anyway. I might have to lock the car. Let's see. Oh yeah, there it goes. So it's locked into place now. And if I unlock it, it comes out. Nice. Okay, time to reassemble everything. Okay, a couple top tips. Uh, I made the mistake of putting this screw in before putting the... Uh, um, the bumper on, and now I have to take the bumper back off to get that out. Whoops. Explains why uh, I was having trouble <laughs> accounting for all the screws, because I'd put this one in the pile for the bumper. Anyway, second, make sure you thread these in. The license plate holder, uh, sorry, license plate light holes before closing it up. Fortunately, I remember to do this, but otherwise they'll be way down in there and you won't be able to fish them out. Finally, make sure the little gaskets are around the uh, ultrasonic sensors. Um, mine was missing one uh, from before, which is not good, but uh, I'll be replacing that when I can. But uh, some of the other ones fell out during disassembly, so make sure to uh, pick those back up. Man, this car is dirty. Anyway. So I booted up the car and uh, now it's complaining about both uh, turn signals being out. Um, let's see, over here, over there. Right, so it's complaining about these. Um, they seem to work though. So I don't know, I'm going to see if the issue is still here tomorrow morning. Um, the car tends to reset overnight with these faults. Uh, so yeah, we'll see. Hmm. Annoying. Okay, here's further proof that it works. So if you have the hazards on, when you open the trunk, it'll start blinking the those bumper lights and they're all working and reverse works too so yeah I'm pretty sure it just stored a fault from where uh, from when this thing was all disconnected because I did turn on the car a few times but uh, anyway and kind of as expected after I left the car locked for about 15 minutes um, the computer reset and everything is fine catch you next time thanks for watching